class recording. Welcome back to political science class, session number three of this week and the last session of this week also. Okay, so we already started the discussion of the chapter legislature, right? From the textbook part A, Indian constitution at work. Okay, and the last classes we discussed about uh, uh, the bicameral and unicameral system of legislature, clear? And the Indian legislature, the houses of the Indian legislature, like the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. Importance of the legislature and the division of powers among these three the organs of the government, like uh, the legislature, executive, and judiciary. Okay. So tell me, Kevin Kosi, what is the division? How can we divide the power among these three organs of the government, like uh, legislature, executive, and judiciary? Please tell me. First. Kevin. Yes, sir. So tell me how the power of the government is divided. I mean, these three organs of the government, like legislature, executive, and judiciary. What are the powers? So the executive makes the laws and. Uh... Uh, Kevin, think and say. Kevin, come on. Sir, yes, sir. So, one minute, one minute. Okay, fine, Kevin. Tell me now. Kevin. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me now. So, so uh, legislature, they pass the laws. The executives are, um, so they are responsible for um, making the laws and all. And then the judiciary, they check whether everyone is following the laws. So as a social science student, basically a political science student, this knowledge is important. Okay. The division of powers, legislature, executive, and judiciary are the three organs of the government. Clear up. Clear. So there are various powers are there for a government. A single organ cannot exercise or enjoy all these powers. Clear or not? If a, a single organ is enjoying all these powers, or a single authority is enjoying all these powers, it will lead to various problems in the society. Clear or not? Okay. So, as per the Indian constitution, the powers are divided. Okay, no organ is able to enjoy the entire or almost all the powers there. So legislature have the power, okay, to make the laws. What is that? To make the laws or making changes in the existing laws. Clear? That is what legislature. Understand? So elected representatives in the legislature, basically, the central government, I mean the parliament, and the state government is claimed as the state legislature, state uh, legislature, so elected members, MLAs and MPs, clear. It is their responsibility to make the laws for the land or making changes in the existing rules and regulations in the constitution. So the power of the legislature is making laws, clear. And the power of the executive is enforcing the laws. What do you mean enforcing? Observing that everyone is accepted and following the rules that made by the legislature. Clear or not? Helping the people to follow that. Okay. Protecting the people. Okay. Clear or not? That's the responsibility of the executive. Okay. Executive means the ministers, their departments, department staff, the bureaucrats. Okay. Clear or not? They're basically helping in the administrative mechanism or uh, they are enforcing the laws. That's what executive, enforcing the laws. Clear, understand? Okay, next one, judiciary. What is the role of judiciary? Interpreting the laws, interpretation. Clear or not? If anybody or any individual or group of people or a state or a government, if they break the law or breach the law, 
it is the responsibility of the judiciary to punish or correct their errors or mistakes clear clear the case of an individual the court has the power to punish the case of a state or the government okay they will correct them clear or by giving the correct interpretation of the rules or laws that existing in the constitution that's what the powers of these three organs of the government okay legislature the law making body executive the law enforcing body and judiciary is the law interpreting body clear or not three organs of the government so indian government basically we know that in in parliament that's what our legislature okay that divided into how many houses abram how many houses are there for indian parliament two two houses are there for the indian parliament so we can say we are following a bicameral legislature system clear or not what is that bicameral legislature two houses are there for the parliament clear or not bicameral system if only one house is there means what will call for that omar if only one house is there for the parliament what is the name for it mono camera what mono mono okay that is correct mono means single okay another word also is there for that what is that mono or or what is that uni camera what is that uni camera legislature clear or not uni camera system so in the last class you wrote the notes what is this bicameral legislature and what is this uni camera legislature how many states of india or what is the total number of states in india they are following the bicameral system such kind of things you wrote already and you are coming to the class with a blind memory okay cannot accept that so after the class it is important to read it read the notes clear so not just to completing the tasks you should read that and learn that okay or else it is useless okay mind it so now today is our topic already we complete the discussion on rajya sabha clear or not rajya sabha okay what type of election is there's called to be indirect election okay we will elect our representatives to the legislature okay clear or not mlas and mps later this mlas are the responsible people they will elect the mps for the rajya sabha okay not only that 12 members can select by the president of india from various spheres of life from arts from science from sports clear or not okay that is the discretionary power of the president of india president of uh, india they are also mps only clear elect 12 uh, nominated members by the president of india okay next topic for us it is lok sabha okay what is that lok sabha the powers functions and the representative system in the lok sabha okay the house of the people what is the other name of rajya sabha what was that upper house upper house any other names call the council of states or something for the house of the wise people house of the wise men there is other names for rajya sabha here it is the house of the people okay house of the people known as the lok sabha house of the people okay very important term the house of the people is popularly known as the lok sabha because lok sabha constitute of uh, elected the representatives from different constituencies clear elected representatives from different constituencies so it is the house of the common okay house of the people clear or not house of the people it is the lower and powerful house of the union parliament so there are two houses are there rajya sabha and uh, lok sabha clear or not rajya sabha and uh, lok sabha rajya sabha is the upper house upper house and lok sabha is the lower house lower house okay clear or not but which house is the powerful house lok sabha is the powerful one okay powerful one 
power is there with this house there. Okay, Lok Sabha. It is a powerful house. Okay. It is directly elected by the people. Then what about Rajya Sabha? Already told you that. What about Rajya Sabha? What kind of election is there for that? Rajya Sabha election? It is direct or indirect? Indirect. Ah, indirect election. Indirect election. Okay, only elected representatives will elect the members for the Rajya Sabha. Clear or not? Basically from the state legislature. Okay, so just remember, it is the powerful house and the election is a direct election, direct election by all the people. It is fully democratic, representative and national house. Clear? Fully democratic. The election is on the basis of democracy, right? Okay, free and fair elections. Representative mechanism is there. A representative system. Clear? Not all the people, but the representatives are from different constituencies of the country on the basis of population. In India, we know that we divided the constituencies on the basis of what? Population. There is no equal representation. Clear or not? There is no equal representation for the different states, uh, but we divided that on the basis of population. Clear or not? So, representation on the basis of population and it is a national house. Clearly, we can say it is fully democratic, representative and a national house. Please write down. Okay. So, come back guys. So, these are the most important points related with Lok Sabha introduction. Okay, next one. Composition of Lok Sabha. How many representatives are there in the Lok Sabha? What methods are there to elect these representatives? Okay, clear or not? Here you can see the present membership of the Lok Sabha is 545. 545. Clear? Out of these, 523 are elected by the people of all the Indian states and returned by the people of Union Territories. Clear? Okay. So, we can see here, 523 from the Indian states and 20 from the Union Territories. So, total 543 only. Clear? 543. But we know that the total number is 545. Okay. Out of these, 523 are elected by the people of the Indian states and 20 by the people of the Union Territories. The president nominated two members of the Anglo-Indian community to the Lok Sabha. Okay. With the power of the president to nominate two Anglo-Indian members to the Lok Sabha. Clear or not? But as today's political scenario, there is numerous controversies are there related with this. Okay. As per the constitution, uh, this is correct. Okay. The maximum membership of the Lok Sabha stands fixed 552 till the year 2010. Odisha has 21 seats in Lok Sabha, out of which some seats stand reserved for SCs and SCs. Okay, so you leave this point, not needed here. Okay, just for an example. Okay, so here you know, after the 20, sorry, 2010, the number of the total number of uh, seats or representatives, it's fixed as 552 and not more than that. But today the number is 545, clear? Clear. The maximum it is 552, but the total number today it is 545, in which two, sorry, 523 from the states, 20 from the Union territories, and two nominated from the President of India from the Anglo-Indian community. Anglo-Indian community. Clear. Okay, so please write down. Okay, so always you should be updated related with these issues there. Okay, the number, the present number of the MPs in the Rajya, sorry, Lok Sabha, because of various issues, uh, the number might uh, vary. And it will increase, chances are therefore to decrease. Okay, so I already told you that today, 25th uh, September 2021. So as per today, it is not 545, but it is 540 only. Five seats are vacant. Five seats are uh, vacant. Okay, so just keep that idea in your mind. This is the general information. Okay, all these things are uh, general information. Okay. So now we are going to the next module, methods of election of the members of Lok Sabha. Okay, clear on members of uh, Lok Sabha. What methods basically you see? Okay, the members of Lok Sabha are elected on the basis of the following principles. What are they? You can see, first, universal adult franchise. You know that, what is this universal adult franchise? Tell me, what is that, Abiram? For this universal, universal adult franchise. franchise means when when people 
um, reach. Universal adult franchise. What is that? When people above eighteen are have the right to vote. Definitely. Okay. Clear on. Right to vote. Okay. So India, it is eighteen. Clear. Different countries following different uh, age limit. So India, we are following this age limit. What is that? The male or female to complete at the age of eighteen, they can exercise this political right. What is that? Right to vote. One person, one vote, one value. Clear? One person, one vote, one value. That the system that what we are following in India. Okay. One person, one vote, one value. So that's going to be. Universal adult franchise. You can write me here. Every citizen who has attained uh, the minimum age of 18 years has the right to vote in the election to the Lok Sabha. However, it is essential that the name should stand included in the voters list of the constituency. Clear? Clear. Not only completed the age of 18, but the another thing here, his or her name should be the Okay, in the voters list, voters list. So we know that one constituency that will divided into number of divisions called to be wards. Okay, what is that? Wards in each local government election we know that. Okay, or in each municipality or a uh, administrative units like a village panchayat we know that that particular area that divided into several wards. There, clear. Okay, one ward meaning nearly one thousand to one thousand five hundred voters will be there in one ward. Clear? Okay, it is varying from thousand to thousand five hundred. Clear? Okay, and if the maximum number it is one thousand five hundred, for example, okay, that many voters are there. So that many eligible voters, that many people are there in that particular ward. Who completed the age of 18 or attained the age of 18? Clear or not? So their name should be there in the voters list. Then only they can vote. Okay, clear or not? If it is not so, not there is no permission to cast the vote. Clear? Clear? Okay. So please keep that idea in your mind. Okay. Every citizen who has attained the minimum age of 18 years has the right to vote in the elections to Lok Sabha. However, it is essential that the name should stand included in the voters list. Of his constituency, clear his constituency. So this is the entire thing is the constituency that divided into several subunits called wards. Okay, clear or not? So you are from different wards. You are living in a, a different area compared with others. Okay, so your name should be there in the voters list. Then only you can cast your vote. Okay, next one: reservation of seats for SC salaries. Clear for the upliftment or development of. Uh, Backward classes and women. There is reserved seats are there. Here we are discussing about the seats for SCs and STs. Scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Backward communities, economically and socially backward communities. Some constituencies are reserved for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. These are called the reserved constituencies. Clear? Some seats, as per the constitution, for the development or for the But we can say social development or economical development of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, group of people, economically and socially backward people. For them, some seats are reserved. Some constituencies are reserved. From each reserved constituency, only candidates belong to SCs and STs, as in the case may be can contest election. However, all the voters of each such constituency exercise their right to vote for electing one candidate belonging to SCs or ST as per their sorry as their representative. Presently, 131 seats stand reserved. Okay, 84 for SCs and 47 for STs. Okay, in Indian legislature, Indian Parliament. Clear or not? Clear. So, example: This is a constituency that is reserved, reserved for SC. Okay. So, remember, there are there is 25 thousand voters are there. clear or not? Okay, but the candidates basically from That SC community. If it is Party A, Party B, or Party C, okay, whatever may be the political party, but candidate should be from which community? That particular caste. I mean that particular community. SC. Clear or not? Or ST. Okay. In other case, STs. Okay. And all these twenty-five voters, 
okay they can exercise their uh, voting rights clear okay, to choose the candidate but our uh, uh, representatives but what is the thing here the representatives is from that particular community clear or not okay clear not only the people uh, belong to sc community but all the people in our voters in that constituency can exercise the voting power to elect the representative clear that's what the served the served seats okay now you can write it these two points what is this universal identifying this and what is the reservation of seats for scs and sts reservation for seats for scs and sts please write down okay so next we are going to next point option uh, c here next point c not option c single member territorial constituencies single member territorial constituencies the idea is simple okay a single mp from one constituency clear so i already told you that the entire country that divided into 543 constituencies clear 543 constituencies and from each constituency one mp okay only one mp from one constituency that's what single member territorial constituencies constituencies okay clear or not on the basis of population and geography the country is divided into number of constituencies clear from each constituencies only one mp the whole country sorry the whole country is divided into as many territorial constituencies as is the number is the mem sorry number of the members of the lok sabha to be elected from each constituency one mp is selected one mp is a elected clear or not okay next one secret ballot secret ballot another one the members of the lok sabha are elected by secret ballot and no one knows his voting decision now electronic voting machines are being used to recording votes clear so ever observed a election day in the news channels you can see the polling booths clear or not they they will use a cotton box or a cardboard box to uh, hide the evm machine there right so it is a secret ballot nobody can understand nobody can uh, find out okay clear or not so that's what a secret ballot here the members of the lok sabha are elected by secret ballot and no one knows his voting decision now electronic voting machines are there okay evms electronic voting machines we are used to record this vote okay clear do you know that there are number of controversies are there related with this evm number of political parties are arguing that the evm might be hacked by the present ruling party or something like that okay clear or not number of controversies are there and basically they are addressing the people i mean the people that uh, the people wanted to voice uh, or raise their voice against this evm we want the old ballot system it seems there clear okay next one last point direct election and simple majority vote victory system okay what is that direct election and simple majority vote victory system we already studied that okay what is that first pass the post system right or not okay so what is that the first pass the post system it is simple majority system all members of the lok sabha are directly elected by the people any voter can cast his vote to elect any candidate of his choice from his constituency a candidate securing the large number of votes from amongst the contestant from the constituency gets elected as the representatives of the people of his constituency in the lok sabha okay first past the post system okay clear sptp system we already know that clear okay so this is the uh, methods basically we are using to elect the members to the lok sabha so you wrote all the three points first three points i think so next one write down single member territorial constituency secret ballot single member territorial constituencies and the secret ballot from this page and the next page direct election and the single majority vote victory system okay okay fine so the next topic for us is qualification of membership of the lok sabha that we will discuss in the next session on tuesday and at the same time there is a test on tuesday okay we will conduct the test in the class time itself okay so everyone please prepare the chapter what is that what is the name of the chapter local self government right clear okay 
So all the notes I will upload. This is a constitute of 20 marks. Clear? So that's just only for 20 marks, including the MCQ. Objective type questions are there. Okay. And the same time, EMR questions also. So we will meet on the next class. Thank you, guys. Bye.